Hello everyone, how's it going? Today we are going to be using Python and machine learning to do some stock prediction. So we opened Yahoo Finance here. And we're going to be looking into the Tesla stock. And if you go to the historical data, it does allow you to view the old archived data about a year long. So it goes all the way to 2020. And it can allow us to download here. If you just click the press, the download button, it'll allow you to download. I already have this downloaded, but we'll go ahead and just replace it and start fresh for you. So let's open this up and it'll allow us to see the date, the opening price, the highest, the lowest, the closest, adjustment and volume. So here, what we're trying to achieve is this price, whether is it going to go up or down, based on the historical data we're going to be predicting whether the price of tesla is going to go up or down and the way we will do that is we create an output folder and we'll say price movement price movement and we want to know whether it's going up or down so if if the price goes up we will mark it as a one so you can see 153 has gone to 160 we will say whenever it goes up you should say one and whenever it stays same or you know it's nothing but zero and if it goes up again it's again one if it goes up again one it goes down zero but we're just trying to find out whether the price of tesla is going to go up or now now let's use excel formula to just specify what's the price status for that day in our historical archived data so for that we'll just use simple if statement we'll say if if Let's go to the next stage here, equal to if this price is greater than the previous day, then write down one, otherwise write down zero. I just save that. The first movement, since we don't have any previous data to that, you can see it's the previous, then you're going down from there. So we're just specifying this. And we'll populate the whole field. We'll go down. We have about 254 values. We'll copy and we'll paste this. So it does allow us to basically say, okay, whatever the price was for the previous day, write down one or zero. So this is just preparing the data for machine learning. And we just save this. Let me go back to our collab. So we come down to our collab file, which is the stock prediction. And this will be in the description so you can open and you can test it for yourself. The only thing we did was just use the Excel file that we get from Yahoo Finance and create this output folder or output column each that we need for our stock prediction. So our prediction, uh, our machine learning model will simply say whether it's going to be a one or a zero. So it will uh, use all this data and then identify whether the stock price is going up or down. That's all it's going to do. So coming down here, we have the stock prediction. The first step you want to do is read the file from the computer. And for that, we are using Google Collab's import file. So let me maximize this a little bit. So it makes it easy for us to see. And let me reduce this. So we are basically first going to be reading the file. We'll say run. And it allows us to choose the file that we want. And we have this Tesla. CSV file that we used. It'll pop up here in the directory folder. You can see the tesla.csv file is now ready for us to use. We'll just simply close this for now and come down. So once we have downloaded the CSV file into our collab, we will then use pandas and pandas to read the CSV file for us. So let me comment, uncomment this and I'll tell you what I'm going to do with that. So you can see this. So it's giving us the data, the date, open, high, everything. And the head allows us to read the first five values. So it's just giving us the snapshot of the whole data. Now, we do need, now, what are all the important values that we need for our stock prediction? So everything is important here. You can see the open, highs, lows, adjustment, column, volume. Because we will tell our machine learning model to use all this data to predict whether my stock is going to go up or down. Now, this is one erroneous data, which is the date column. This date column has just dates for the month, year, the month, year, and the day, which does not make any sense for the machine learning model. For that purpose, I mean, if, if, we, uh, if we have data that is unnecessary, that is basically noise, it will cause 
adverse effect on our machine mo learning model. For that purpose, we will delete the date. And for that, we have this particular function drop, which is under pandas. It can drop a particular column that we are not interested in. We just specify the column date and we say in place true. So it does not create another a whole data frame. It just deletes it right there and then. And once we delete this, now we, if we rerun this, you can see now the date column would be gone. We can see now if I went inside rerun it, the date column has vanished. So now we have all this information. Go, let's go into the next step. Next step is splitting the data into the input and output, and then splitting it into a training and testing data set. So for that purpose, we will you, we will tell our machine learning model that we are interested in this price movement. I'm interested in whether or not my stock is going up or down. So down is zero or and up is one. So I'm interested in whether my stock is going to go up or down. And for that purpose, you can use all this other information, which is going to be your input. The input would be specified by the letter X, and the output would be specified by the letter Y. And for that purpose, we'll say everything which is before the price movement is going to be the X, which is the input, and price movement by itself is the output. So we'll split the data and we we'll say data, location, we need all the rows. And we are only interested in the columns from one to six. So we have six columns here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So these six columns are what are going to be specified as our input. And this price movements column would be specified as our output. So we're just saying, okay, X is going to be everything from, Z, from one to six or zero to five. And the output is going to be the last column, which is nothing but minus one. And we're just taking that my, minus one column for ourselves. Let me just run this. So we have our input and our output. Now, for the purpose of our machine learning model, we do want to separate training and testing data sets. So then we can later on, once the model is run, we can test it out and see how's the model performing or how's the machine learning model performing. And for that purpose, we will be using scikit-learn's train and test split function. So this train test split function, it does allow us to split the data into a training set and a testing set. So we'll say run and please can, uh, give me a training set of input, train, testing set of the input, training set of the output, and also testing set of the output. We will use this function. We'll use this the train, train test split function. We just specify the input and the output. And we say the test size is going to be 20%, which is 0.2 of the whole data. And we are also specifying a random state, which will shuffle the data. So it, the 80 and 20% is not the first half or the first 80% and the 20 is not, not the last 20%, but it's going to randomize the data and it can select uh, randomly. 80, 80 percentage of the data and then randomly 20 percentage of the data. But once we have everything split, then we come down to the meat of the pro project, which is the machine learning model. So everything, if we are, what we did until this point was nothing but preparing the data, preparing the data set, creating the testing and uh, training data set. That's all we did. Now we come down to the machine learning model. So that's this is the part where, where we want to use the machine learning power to do our prediction. Now, this is a very simple, very uh, nice code that allows us to compare a couple of machine learning models. So in this case, I used logistic regression, random classifier, random forest classifier, decision tree classifier. So these are three models that we will be running. Each of these three models run in different manners. They have their own uh, criteria. Everything is set separately. And we, we will be just using these three models to test on the same data and see how, how the prediction or how the accuracy level varies between three models. And then the model which performs the best, we will use that for our prediction. So uh, if you go into the model, we, we run through each model, we try to train the model, and then we do the prediction, and then we create an accuracy score. We're just creating a table here. This table will allow us to compare the accuracy score for 
all the three models that we are using in this particular case. We will say run. And if you go down here, it shows that the results for the logistic regression, the accuracy is about 45%, which is less than 50, which is less than tossing a coin, basically. Now, coming down to the next stage, which is decision tree. Decision tree seems to be having about 62%, which is a little better than guessing. Now, the next one is the random forest one. The random forest has about 60%, which is better than you know, guessing, which is better than the tossing of the coin, but well, not, not as good as the decision tree. But if you look into the last and average score, it looks like the decision tree and the random forest almost has the same step. And if we are interested in identifying what the prediction is, or what kind of an output we are going to be getting, we then use this particular function. We use, okay, we are just training it once again with the decision tree classifier, and we'll use model.predict to give us the prediction of what our output should look like. We say print prediction. We'll, we'll just print, and this is the prediction that it gives us. It just specifies us that, okay, the price is based on the testing value that I have, this is what you're going to be getting. And this is what the model has predicted for us. And if you try to compare that with the Y test, which is the actual value, there will be some mistakes. There will be some places where it will be matching. So you can see this zero is zero is matching. The one and one is matching. The one and one is matching. But then zero, this zero and this zero is not matching. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the model gave us 60% of score. So it'll be, I mean, it'll be, good to the point of 60 percent but again this is not worth uh, uh, using it for stock prediction there are a number of reasons for that is because the data that we had was only for one year and again you're just using the available values that you have from yahoo finance this is just specifying okay the price was movement this is just based on the price movement that's going on but uh, in order for the stock prediction, then you need to have sentiment analysis. You need to specify what's going on in the market. So the, all those things come into picture, with, which is a little bit more than what the project that we came up with here. But this is just a very good introductions, fun exercises of how to use machine learning to do our stock prediction. Yeah, so just want to share this video with you. If it helped you, consider subscribing. With that, you guys take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.